This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about The Lost Honor of Katharina Bloom from 1975, directed by Volker Schlondorf and Marguerite von Trotta. The nice. synopsis of this film, no tagline, folks. Mm. After a chance encounter with a wanted man, a woman is harassed by the police and press until she takes violent action. What kind of action? Violent action. I think that's uh, kind of saying a little too much there. A little too much, yes. It's not necessary. So, RJ, mm-hmm. this movie kind of caught me off guard. Really? Yeah. So, I didn't know anything about this movie. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen it before. I kind of only ever heard the title, and it's one of those movies. It sure sounds like a Criterion Collection type of movie, and mm-hmm. but it's like one that no one talks about. Um like, honestly, I don't know if a lot of people uh, talk about Volker Schlondorf uh, much at all. <laughs> well, maybe not people you know, but I talk about <laughs> Volker Schlondorf daily, I think. Uh, and yeah, uh, as noted in a, a few weeks ago, uh, when listener uh, Rupa <laughs> asked, hey, what do you think the next movie is that's directed by a woman? This would be like the closest one to it because it's co-directed. Mm-hmm. Uh, by Marguerite von Trotta, and that because it's a long ways till Fat Girl. So, <laughs> yeah, I think you're kind of a long ways till Fat Girl, if you know what I mean. Sure, pal. Sure. <laughs> so, Does that make sense? Oh, uh, keep going. So I went into this movie like, uh, well, we'll see what it is, and immediately I'm like, whoa, this movie feels so contemporary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like this, this feels like the kind of movie that I would watch on a regular basis like or Mm -hmm. i would like the type of movie that i would watch this like 1970s kind of taut thriller kind of thing about what kind of thriller taut okay a a little wound and about uh police abuse and Mm -hmm. uh people like being pushed to the edge and uh Mm -hmm. but like not in this like absolutely cartoonish way and i was kind of like whoa this movie is definitely my shit it's I don't want you start this whole thing over. Say all those things again, but change the words you taught, use. Taught. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. So, so this nice. movie, uh, it starts off with uh, one of my boys, Jorgen Procknow, Doss Boot, Ooh, Sutter Kane, who, uh, one of the stars of, uh, I believe it's House of the Dead. <laughs> one, well, one of he's... those uh, Uwe Boll films. Uh, it's always a pleasure mm-hmm. when I see uh, Jorgen pop up, and he's just right there, and there's something happening. He's being followed. He's being shadowed around here in West Germany, a place that we were always mm-hmm. told was the good Germany after <gasps> World War II. Uh, not that questionable possession Germany that's like kind of mm-hmm. going back and forth and is all messed up, real mm-hmm. schizophrenic, a, a, a place divided, and people are acting like, who am I, you know? You know? Who are they? Who are they? So... Mm-hmm. This movie uh, then proceeds to like this party. People are having a good time, uh, and again, like the the way this movie shot us, it's like, huh? It feels like a long time since I've seen a movie feel this contemporary. It feels like we've just been watching, a, like even like Fear and Loathing, like the other a uh, few weeks ago, just felt like uh, I don't know, felt like a 1998 movie, but it's also mm-hmm. very Terry Gilliam. This though felt a little bit more timeless in the right kind of way. Yes. Uh, and we kind of get this meetup between uh, Jorgen and uh, the the character of Katharina Bloom, played by uh, Angela, Angela Winkler. That was close. You and almost didn't get it. Oh, I got it, though. I, got, uh-huh. I, was, I was right there. And uh, I don't know. They immediately have, like, chemistry, RJ. I feel like these people, like, really, like, were, like, they, they, they like, seemed like they really knew each other. But then it's like, no, they just mm-hmm. met. And you're like, Wow. This is nice. And then they, they hook up and there's all these comments mm-hmm. how like she's like a real nun. She's real, like doesn't like want to meet men. She's uh kind of a prude and doesn't party. And then and then she does. And then mm-hmm. uh, but there's all this like there's this circumstances going around. There's a guy dressed like a sheik and uh he's obviously making some phone call he's making sort of phone calls or contacts and a radio about uh making contact and following this guy you're like mm-hmm. what's going on what's this espionage what was him on that boat all about and uh soon enough this uh young uh Katharina Blum she finds herself in her apartment house flat and there's a police raid as men in uh like <laughs> what we, like the welder masks show up 
Uh, yeah, like they're kind cl- of cloth welder mask, like Kevlar dressed welder mask, like balaclava, like yeah. things where it's just like just eyes, mm-hmm. kind of. And uh, yeah, they're it's pretty like, spooky. It's like it reminded me of the uh, mask of Vulcan from the old uh, Hercules cartoon. That's like that's a that's a tough that's a deep pull there, man. Very deep, but it kind of look it up. So mask, of and then Vulcan. they they show up, and they so begins the dehumanization of Katharina Bloom. As uh-huh. her life falls under the microscope of the the free democracy of uh, the West German police force in mm-hmm. their pursuit of terrorists. Uh, so there's this weird kind of tie-in with uh, the recent remake of Suspiria, which also depicts this <laughs> period of time, yeah. the mid-70s West Germany with, uh, what's the name of this, uh, this terrorist outfit? The, uh, not build, it's like Bod... Oh, it's like the Red Army, isn't it? Like Dragon Ball, uh, Dragon Ball style. <laughs> like Dragon Ball style. It kind of isn't it? Or no, wait, that's the real one that uh, yeah, yeah, Yui yeah. Bowl the Red, Red Army. On. Yeah, it's like not there's, Yui there's, there's like the actual German name of it, but yeah, it's like the Red Army yeah. faction. And uh, Henrik Bull. Yeah, so there's like they're robbing banks and mm-hmm. uh, taking this money to fund the buying of guns so they can take back the capital and make a statement, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And the police, they're not big fans of that. And they like to, you know, overreach and overstep their bounds. And um, it seems mm-hmm. like in this film, they're uh, and probably in real life, they're uh, also working hand in hand with the uh, friendly tabloid newspapers, the press, the paper, uh, as it's called mm-hmm. here. There's a guy, what, Werner Totges, uh, wearing his very flamboyant uh, bow tied outfit with his big mm-hmm. pompadour hair. Being a real scumbag uh, journalist type, just like inter- doing interviews and then completely just changing the words of what they say and just writes whatever he wants because there's no apparent uh, checks or balances in that regard. You can just make up shit and there's yeah. no real legal recourse because the word's out and uh, you're slammed. They take photos of you. It's very like, I mean, we've kind of been here before. We kind of know how uh, the tool of the, the Fifth Estate works. How it's going to how it works and it's going to dismantle you and tell lies and there's really not much you can do, and you just kind of have to weather the storm. Everyone's telling Katharina that she has to basically deal with it um, because of this like w- like one off uh, affair with this guy that she just met. And no one can mm-hmm. believe that they just met. She must be a terrorist too. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. But she's also kind of covering with the fact that she's been having an affair with a uh, rich married guy. Who doesn't want the truth out there? Um, so she's like trying to do the right thing by him by also like debasing herself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a whole, it's a whole nightmare of uh, humanity <laughs> on display. So her her honor is lost, RJ. <laughs> I I understand. There's lots of things that you were uh, commenting on there about, you know, the tabloids just baseless claims and. And then this nightmare of humanity, it all equates to modern day podcasting, if you ask me. Absolutely. What we do is completely baseless. Yeah. But that's the point, right? Yeah, Katarina Bloom, man. Yeah. So a lot of this movie is just uh, depicting her treatment by the police and how the police operate, how they interview uh, the lead kind of asshole cop it's played by uh, oh, a fellow so good. M- mario adorf okay rj mm-hmm. i've been telling you now for a while you got to watch a movie called caliber nine it's an italian movie he's what do you in... mean you've been telling me i've for been a telling while. you i've been telling you for a while caliber nine he's in that and he's awesome this guy the movies that i've seen with him mm-hmm. she's even in uh sam peckinpah's major dundee Oh, this is uh, allegedly on my watch list already. Yeah, see? This Caliber uh, 9. Uh, yeah, uh, he's in Future Creep, The Tin Drum, also directed by Volker Schlondorf. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, no, he's great. It, he plays, he's like uh, Alfred Molina-ish. I, okay, it is actually, it's kind of mind-blowing that you said that. Yeah. Not, it's, it's not, not mine, it's not weird. because he, it's accurate. He, he looks exactly like fucking Alfred Molina. Mm-hmm. Like, Exactly. There was a ton of people in this movie where I was like, well, that's Alfred Molina. And then like the reporter, you like, I can't fucking remember who it is now. But yeah, the cop, the whole time watching it, I was like, that's Alfred Molina. 
that's exactly who that is. It's funny that you say that too. It's almost like you and me have uh, similar opinions or, on or, stuff. Or this guy looks a lot like Alfred. This Bruna. guy looks exactly like <laughs> Alfred. Yeah, like, this he, is like literally does. usually this is RJ's territory of like this person <laughs> looks exactly like blank. No, I'm I'm getting there first because this person yep. like he does. I had the note there too. So yeah, you mm-hmm. uh, you were right to jump onto it, or else I would have claimed that as uh, one of my own. He yeah. does. He looks exactly like Alfred Bolina. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I was really impressed with this movie, not wanting to go mm-hmm. too much deeper into the ins and outs of it yet. But uh, yeah, this movie is like so my thing. Um, mm-hmm. I think, I don't know if the ending works. Uh, okay, but, interesting. Um, I, it's, it kind of goes like where it inevitably goes, but then the, it has this epilogue that almost is unnecessary, but the final beat of the movie is really like, yep, that's pretty well how it plays out. So yeah, because uh, the the author of the novel this is based on uh, Heinrich Boll, Uwe Boll. Uh, yeah, don't be confused with Uwe. Uh, mm-hmm. He won that Nobel Prize for the for what for literature? Uh, yeah, for literature. Nineteen seventy two. Okay. I'm not sure if he actually won it for this book, but he's won one in the past. Nice. And, Good for uh, him. It sounded like he was addressing his own uh, issues with the media. And uh, mm. so he had a, a bone to pick. Yeah. So yeah, the, the name was coming up, the Red Faction thing. It was, uh, it's the Bader Meinhof gang. That's uh, the actual, like, that's what they call them in Suspiria uh, 20, mm. 2017 or whatever. But so yeah, it, it ties into that. And Lost Lost Honor of Katharina Bloom is a much better movie and uh, a more appropriate mm. place mm-hmm. to talk about those things than your <laughs> remake of uh, Argento Suspiria. But anyway, mm-hmm. RJ, I'm going to hand it off to you because I'm curious what you think about The Lost Honor of Katharina Bloom. I, uh, I, I think I always deflect on you and I'm like, well, why do, what do you think about what I think about this movie? Because well, I think we both uh, went in on this movie, maybe like expecting the worst. Uh, I, I wasn't really expecting anything, but like last week when you were like the lost honor of Katarina Bloom, I was like, Oh, Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Whoa, what a, what a, what a, what a we, terrific sounding movie. We were so enthusiastic. So in the, uh, in the preamble, uh, friend of the show, Justin Peterson was talking about, He's like, it's nice that you guys go in the spine order because you sometimes cover movies that like you would never cover other- otherwise. And I, I kind of hope that there are I want two things of our fans to do because it's too tasking for us now to do make two lists on Letterboxd uh, lists of movie criterion creep movies that have American remakes such as this movie, which we'll get to. And then lists of uh, movies that have absolutely no recognition to us and then we watch them and then we both really really enjoy them uh so i really like this movie jared nice like a lot yeah uh i was watching it and uh, i i was gonna watch it with andrea and i told her what it was about and she's like oh that sounds good um and then i was like okay i'm gonna watch it i was like oh it's german by the way Uh-oh. and she's like oh because it was like kind of <laughs> late and she's like well She's like, if it was earlier, I'd watch it. I was like, yeah, I know. I'm, I know. I was like, I'll, I'll check it out. And I, I've mentioned this before. Like, I find I always hit the wrong note with Andrea because it's like things that sound like they'll appeal to her. will watch and then it'll be like a real bummer. And then things that it's like, uh, I don't know what it'll be like because it's completely unknown to you and me. And then I'll watch it and I'll be like, oh, fuck. I'll be like, that was a good, good ass movie. Yeah. This movie like so. To throw out there to people, this movie kind of reminds me. And RJ, you haven't watched, I don't think, any Costa Gavras movies. The guy who's directed like movies uh, like, I, the, I like we will because I think all his like four big movies are all in the collection. Uh, Z, Missing, Stage of uh, State of Siege, and The Confession. This movie fits very comfortably in this uh, period of time of uh, like this like seventies filmmaking of mm-hmm. these like kind of grittier kind of like, like kind of political thrillers, I guess. And this is more of like a drama but it has like the trappings of a political thriller. Like it feels right. like that. And uh, as uh, was asked earlier in an email about, Hey, what have you seen day of the Jackal? That movie fits into this, this world that I love. And this movie for whatever reason, doesn't get brought up in that context. And it absolutely fits into it. And is like mm-hmm. the, whatever aesthetic this movie fits into is my thing. I love these types of movies. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so the only reason I kind of like when, into all that was to just kind of show that it uh, it does pay off 
for every horse's mouth and um, <laughs> variety lights, there uh, for every five of the movies that people just don't give a shit about the Pepe Lamocos. Once in a while, you do find a lost honor, Katarina Bloom. So uh, I I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, I was watching it. And I, when I finished, I, I just ran upstairs to talk to Andrea. I texted her like she was upstairs and I was downstairs and we're fat, lazy people. And I was just texting her. I was like, this movie is really good. Uh, but like once I was done, I went upstairs. And I was like, man, I was like, that was a good show. I was like, I think you would have really liked it. But I was like, I know you would have also have been really ups- like upset or annoyed or frustrated with it because I was like, it's too real, man. Mm-hmm. It's way too. It's It's too real. Uh, so I, re- I really like this movie for many reasons. Um, <laughs> uh, just to go off of the start, I can't even remember. I wrote down killer song. I don't even remember what it was, but when they're at that party, there's oh. a song playing and I should have, it's too late now. Never mind. Scrap all that. I can't listen to it. Uh, but this movie I think has like a really nice cold open where it's following a uh, Sutter Kane around and it's like it's it almost like starts to play out like a police report where it's just like the pictures and then it's like it's like Tuesday the 7th mm-hmm. at 8 p.m. And you're just like, what is this like a episode of SVU? And it's it's like playing out like that and you don't really know what's happening. But uh, it, it like it, do, it it doesn't give you any exposition, but it's not hard to follow at all. Like they do a really good job of showing you what's happening it's like yeah these two people meet at a party and they have like an attraction to each other and then they they leave together it's like that's not that crazy you know that happens a lot Mm -hmm. in the world so it's like all right that's pretty cool and then you see the uh next you get the raid on the apartment Mm -hmm. and you see like right from there you get the mistreatment of uh katarina bloom where like they break into her house. She's having breakfast. And uh, the guy's like, so so what did you do? Did you fuck that guy? Mm-hmm. And she's just I like. Use that, I wouldn't use that word. I wouldn't use that word. And see, that wasn't one of my uh, edits to the script. That's the actual word. But they're like going through her shit. And one of the cops comes up to her and he's just like, look at you flaunting around mm-hmm. in, your, uh, in your wardrobe. It was, uh, it, was, it was the DA actually. Yeah, the DA, and she's just like, I'm at, I'm at home. She's like, you guys broke into my house. Yeah. Uh, and then I think it really, like, this movie, so the first example of this is in that scene, uh, but I think the movie itself does it really good where they set up all these really subtle uh, examples of the, like, the ignorance and the incompetence of all of the people involved in, like, the the shaming of Katarina Bloom. So like in the incompetence aspect, they're like raiding the house. And then at one point, one of those guys' guns just goes off. Like it just discharges. Squeezes his finger. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and he's like, ooh, whoops. My bad, guys. You know? uh, so you get that. Uh, and you're just like, oh, baby. Uh, and then one of the other ones that I think is just like, I think it, it's, it sums up this whole movie like perfectly is in the interrogation scene when the cop is just fucking screaming at her. And he's just like, he's like, you're a two bit whore. You always have been. Look at you. Look at you. And he like, it's not those words, but it's basically, that's what he's saying. He's just like, tell us what's really going on. And he's just like yelling at her, berating her. And she's just like, I don't know what to tell you, man. She's like, I just met this guy. Like there's nothing else there. Uh, and he, the, the cop gets like frustrated and he's like, ah, whatever. He's like, you take over. And he like starts to walk away and he passes a guy and he smacks, he like flicks him in the balls as he passes him. <laughs> well, he that, like him. That's the guy that he's like picking on the whole time. I, I know, but like. Well, cause there's like the bit where it's like, what's the bit, uh, where he's like asking him like, well, what do you think about the situation? And he's like, well, if it was me, I would call, I mean, if I knew that yeah. someone I was with was a part of this, I, I mean, I would go to the cops, but I don't think an average person would cause they're not cops. And he's like, that's, that's, you know what? That's, uh, I don't know how you're going to make it in this life. Cause, uh, you're not a, a cop wouldn't think that. And it's you're like, like anyone who thinks like that shouldn't be a, a yeah. cop, which is like, Oh my God. It's like, fuck you. Fuck you, you motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're, yeah. the, you're part of the problem, you fictional character. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. It's like, it's it's like I was, what I said to Andrea, I was like, it's too real. Like, there's too many, I, 
all those people exist. And I, I just thought that that little really subtle thing that's like so like missable where it's just him walking by a guy and just like like begging another guy as he walks by i was like that sums up this whole movie where it's like he's he's so were they working at a comic serious? book store yeah at a comic book store like jared style walking around begging people but like the there's like this uh this like miss this like thing about like how serious the situation is but as soon as he like turns away from it he's just like oh and he's, he's like kind of a dude again do you know what i mean he's like mm-hmm. bro so i thought that was really funny uh going back a, se- a second i didn't want to miss this uh when they uh one of the other first acts of dehumanization to katarina bloom is when they make her dress naked in the bathroom and that lady looks into her butt She's like, I got to watch it. And then she looks into her butt and she says something like, uh, oh, it's too bad. She's like, you're actually a pretty nice girl or a pretty good looking girl. It's like, too bad you did this. And she's like, what? <laughs> what? So I think this movie, like the biggest thing of this, it's like, it's not even like victim blaming because she's not really. Well, I guess she's a victim of like circumstance where just because of like not even a known associate, just some guy that she met turns out to be this guy. She becomes a victim to that, like out of association. So it's like victim blaming in that sense where everyone's just begging on her. And it's so like, I think where this movie really succeeds is the amount that they pile on and pile on. It's like completely overwhelming, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think it's, it's totally believable. Like it's, ne- it's never to the point where you're like, uh, that's a little much or anything like that. Like it didn't seem like that to me at least where, uh, where like the papers and the cops are, I, I never felt like they were to the point where they were overdoing it past believability. Like, um, uh, like where it was believable. I was like, yeah, I think this is stuff that happens all the time. The, in both the, of the, the abuse of both power. Of <laughs> yeah, the abuse of power in both of these. It's like I, I really think that's something that happens all the time in both of these rights. Mm-hmm. So uh, it never gets past the point of like believability for me. And I think the the whole movie, it's it's really tense. And I think it they really like make a case for her where um, – so you were talking about the ending and stuff like that. And uh, I actually – I actually really like the ending because I think it is, I think it like, it's not like a belief. I wouldn't say believable in that sense, but I think it's justified where there's all these things happening. And I think in this one specifically, they really show why she would kind of the amount of shit shoveled on her, like with all the letters and phone calls she gets and stuff like that. Like immediately it's just like, it's like, are you horny? Like slid under the door. And it's it's like, yeah, I'm sure. It's like just I'm hardcore sure, pornography postcards. <laughs> yeah, just uh, as an experiment, go on Twitter, make your uh, profile pic oh, a, 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 a woman and just see what happens. Oh, God. I think the one bit, too, where it's like kind of like where everything's kind of wrapped up up to that point, And there's like the one guy, her like uncle, who's like, oh, well, I mean, they kind of buried everybody. They didn't bury me, though, but it's probably because I'm an ex-Nazi. <laughs> and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Like, because, yeah, these people, like probably everyone in this movie – they were alive during World War Two because it's, it's 1975, and it's like, oh, I mean, the youngest person here <laughs> would be like 30 if they were born in 1945, and it's like, oh, these, all of these people are older than that. It's like these are the people who didn't get killed during the war, so they were around for some shit, and they saw some stuff, even mm-hmm. even if they were 10 years old or 20 years old at the time. You're like, oh, they have a real uh, different world view. And uh, this guy's like, oh, yeah, he used to be a Nazi. Or and he's like, Haha. And he's like, well, of course they wouldn't attack him. I mean, he, had a, he was a good military man, the right wing newspaper. Yep. And you're like, yeah, that's uh, oh, that, that little the moment I thought ball. was like real like strange. Because like it also explained why that guy was the way he was. It's sort of like, oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. Because, I mean, the guy's <laughs> completely talking. He's like, wow, it's not, you just suck it up. It's not a thing. What, what are, what's everyone so worked up about? Well, when they go into like they take her home to her apartment and it's like totally trashed. And he's like, he's like, I don't really see an issue here. He's like, it seems fine to me. And you're like, oh, you're like, what's this guy's deal? Is he intentionally uh, like obtuse or ignorant or like what's going on? He's what we call a good German, RJ. Oh, a nice good German's like all is fine. Yeah. 
no problem. I've seen I've seen worse. I've seen worse. So, yeah, like I think so. That's what I. My whole point, I guess, was that's what I think. Or I think this the film. Yeah, talk gets uh, in, interrogating uh, the dying old woman, <laughs> and just oh why, why, uh, why? why? Just slapping the newspaper on her. Don't worry about it, baby. We're going to take a nice little picture. It's like, so you would say that, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, so, like, I think um, even more than the police, like, the police are pretty despicable. Even, like, I think another reason why it's what they do is so good is even the cop who seems like yeah. kind of a good guy, he's sleazy, too, because he's, like, following her around and he's, like, kind of has a crush on her and he doesn't ever do anything bad. Mm. But at the same time, it's like, is what he's doing, is it because he's actually concerned about her? Or is it just because he's like, hey, check me out? Uh, and the only reason I say that is because there's always the turn with the characters in this movie. Where, like, the reporter, he's like, I knew you'd come around. Hey, do you want to have a quick real, uh, quick little romp? Oh. Nah? Okay, whatever. We'll, we'll keep go- move past that. And, like, stuff like that pops up so frequently. Where it's just, like, it's, like, guys that are just like, is there an opening here? Yeah? No? No. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. It's like if there is, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll take advantage of that. But if not, well, no big deal. How about that uh, prison cell toilet? Am I right? Whew, I think someone was sick. I think someone was sick. I think someone was sick. I was pretty like shocked that her first re- response in there was to clean that toilet. I was like, don't touch that, lady. Hey. But then, I, but then I realized she was in there for like hours. Mm-hmm. Be- because like uh, I thought they were just gonna pop her in there for a minute, but that guy Alfred Molina was so pissed off. He's like, let her let her sweat it out, let her sweat it out. Can she go home? Well, I mean, why would she if she didn't do anything wrong? Mm-hmm. Why would she go home? Uh, there was one thing too that I thought was like such a oh man, like uh, this movie really riled up my uh, like fucking feminist my, my, agenda? No, my fucking pigs mindset that i think everyone yeah. gets to like whenever you know if you get pulled over for speeding you're just like <laughs> fucking coughs man there's it's like fucking eat stuff in their face full of donuts and then you're like uh and then other times when they're like busting pieces of shit you're like oh man that job sucks i need to be a cop i mm-hmm. I, I swing it doesn't it depends on what i'm watching i'm very easily manipulated well, that's that's the idea, right? Yeah. I, I think the one that like really stuck out to me, like, so it was what I was saying. I think the media is a lot more despicable than the cops, and uh, I think it's a lot like super accurate for both of them. But the one thing with the police that uh, stuck out with me was there's a line here where they're like talking to her, and they're basically like they're leading her. It's like this is why. It's like obviously you wouldn't do this or this or that because you're. You're not like some kind of whore, right? <laughs> and uh, and then they're talking about it like, well, if if there's a reason for this or that, and then uh, the quote is, as an adult, you should understand that. And it's just like such a like a petty like condescending thing to say to someone. It's like, well, as an adult, of course you wouldn't do that, yeah. would you? Would you, Jarrett? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they're always, it's like, what do you call it? Begging the question. Legal. Begging. Yeah. Oh, well, right. well, you're not a bad person, right? I mean, obviously, if, if you were a bad person, you would think otherwise. So, but you're a good person. Well, there's, there's like ways to do that too. Like, and it's not, a, it's not even a secret or anything like that. But a lot of psychology studies, like things that I looked at were um, showing where it's just like, yeah, you can, it's, it's like, you can pretty much get whatever answer you want based on how you phrase phrase it it's like whatever you want to have said you can you can make that happen no in like a series of questions yeah and then there's like kind of like the overarching uh art the the theme i guess or not even maybe themes the wrong wrong for, word for it but sort of that arc of you know the system that we use or we've have in place mm-hmm. to like prevent these things from happening are the mm-hmm. things that also drive people toward the very things we're trying to prevent there's that yeah. irony, obviously, I guess, in the movie. How it all pays off with her uh, spoilers gunning down the man who's mm-hmm. uh, been aiding and ruining her life and making her life hard. Yep. And so, uh, and that's okay. But yeah, I, I can, so, I've seen like, uh, even like when the movie was released, some people thought that the ending was too pat and kind of like, this is like, this is like a revenge fantasy for Heinrich Boll, the author, mm-hmm. and it kind of like doesn't really jive with reality. It, does, it kind of... 
goes against how the whole movie has kind of been like setting up this whole grim premise and there mm-hmm. might have been a different way but part of it was to get to that moment but, so but then i love I, but i yeah. love the ending though because it shows like mm-hmm. what happens when you do that the 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 enemy like because i think it's like the, the guy who gives that speech at the end i'm not sure if he's the police chief or oppression he, of freedom of or, press or, or he's like i think he's the editor of the paper yeah. and he just like he's able to like just manipulate it all and turn it into like oh this is like the enemy of the press we can we should be able to say whatever we want and they, they they're everyone's able to weaponize others mm-hmm. actions at all times and it's that's like why like one of the worst things like violence can be like it feels good in the moment but at the same time it's the worst thing because it can always be turned against you and i think life shows over and over again that that's what happens like it has the opposite mm-hmm. effect uh violence as a kind of a solution is it yes the, usually the opposite happens and then sometimes it, yeah. it sometimes it doesn't and then it's like oh <laughs> great mm-hmm. yeah. no for sure man like and that's kind of the um the thing too where uh i could see the ending going either way when i watched it i was like yeah this is totally wish fulfillment for the guy writing it but i kind of like that i was like yeah it's like you know what if i sometimes when you get shit on and shit on and shit on you're like i really wish i could fucking do this like death and then wish. it's like like death wish exactly and this is like this guy's like way to kind of vent it like i think i think it actually fits with the movie where all of the movie is so believable and so accurate in like in my mind that it's like yeah you know what he he like hits all of these right points and it's just like you know what let's see let's see it just actually happen mm-hmm. just do it and then it's like what you said i think it's even more effective uh or like successful because right after it happens then you get that big speech where it's just like this is exactly the kind of thing you'd expect from a communist mm-hmm. and it's like it shows, the, the, it shows the real danger we're all in the media has to be protected at all me and, mm-hmm. and it's like it's, yeah yeah. And and they hammer it, or like he hits on it the whole movie too where even like the normal paper it's just like they're talking about it's like uh why she would like go with that guy and it's like the ex-husband it's like well I could never have a Porsche it's like our modest livings aren't good enough and it's like these are exactly the ideals that come with like socialism or something and you're just like what? <laughs> you didn't say any of those things but yeah. uh, uh, but it sticks out with you I don't know if you Yellow yeah. journalism, as uh, the articles would say, tabloids, <laughs> the papers. So I don't know if you know this, Jared, but uh, I did a little research, uh, as I've been not it. known to do. Uh, no, not research. Actually, I just um, when I was reading into this movie, I did read about like the guy who wrote this because I really liked it. So I wrote, mm-hmm. read about like that guy, and then the book itself, and then I stumbled across a little review. From a, a Mr. Roger yes, I Yeah. And uh, he was not a fan of the ending. And he's just like, the movie's pretty good until she kills that guy. And uh, I just didn't think it was very good from there on. That's not how Ebert sounded. But, uh, you know. And I was just like, man, Ebert, you're such a fucking nerd. Like, <laughs> get over it, dude. He, I, I think he's over it now. Well. He's I over hope. everything. <laughs> If he comes back and he's just like, mm. Cut her you know what though? Boom. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if Roger would have changed his mind if he had seen Act of Passion, aka the lost honor of Catherine Beck. So I didn't even realize that this thing had two names until that, I, until today, two days after I watched the movie, when I was trying to find pictures of these movies and I saw it was like Act of Passion and then it just in the brackets, like, lost the honor of Catherine Beck. And I was like, wait a minute. It's like, is this thing actually called act of passion? I was like, that's weird. <laughs> Tell me about act of passion, Jared. Ooh, Tell me, me about why you watched that movie. Well, I watched it cause you watched it and, uh, <laughs> you had such high praise for it. I was like, well, I mean, if RJ Balog likes this movie so much, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe I should check it out too. And mm-hmm. it was on YouTube. It's only an hour yes, and a half. It and, uh, it stars, Whistler himself of Blade, Whistler. <laughs> uh, Chris Christopherson, and mm-hmm. uh, a bunch of other people you've seen in other movies. Uh, but this is in TV movie land. Yes. And it feels exactly like every, like what you could imagine is a CBS TV movie. Yep. It has all the appeal of an episode of Matlock or Columbo. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. has none of those, none of the star power of an Andy Griffith or a Peter Falk. 
Well, it's got Chris Christopherson. Who's barely in this. Whistler from Blade. Yeah. Is he still alive? Chris Christopherson? Yeah. I think he's still t- still trucking. Okay. You can confirm that. Uh, so okay. this, this is pretty well the exact same story. And I was actually amazed. I did not think that this would end with uh, Catherine Beck killing the uh, tabloidsmen. <laughs> I, I was thinking that they would like do some pat uh, TV kind of twist for American audiences who couldn't handle uh, a woman taking back the night against yellow journalism. But uh, no, they they actually did it with the, with what's his name, blonde haired heel guy who always shows up in movies as a smarmy asshole. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this movie is the shits. It is it will oh, it is a say. it is a real demonstration of how good of a movie Lost Honor of Katharina Bloom is. Yep. Like just like actual good filmmaking, mm-hmm. actors, cinematography, everything. It's like this is a this is a real movie by like filmmakers. And then there's Act of Passion, which is just like this is hokum. Like the scene of like uh our Catherine Beck smashing plates in her uh kitchen, <laughs> which is like so like hammy and mm-hmm. uh like every garbage like a very special uh, presentation on CBS kind of thing where mm-hmm. it's just like there's no framing it's just she does things and then she acts and then the scene ends uh the first 20 minutes are accomplished in the first 10 minutes of the uh the feature film which is something because yep. it's like you'd think it'd be the other way around it'd mm-hmm. be like a lot more um tight but no no we got to take advantage of all the Chris Christopherson that we can get cuz that's about all he does in this movie he uh shows up he makes a little love you, you get to see him like pull up the blanket and bring her her body <laughs> in underneath him oh boy well it's an act that's the act of passion jared truly that is the act of passion um God, then like the police interrogation <laughs> is just so mm-hmm. flat and long and I like, got the key right but it's here. Also, and you also get like this presentation of like the, the the law enforcement stuff. It feels very American and kind of like the police mm-hmm. aren't that bad. Cause it's not like, it's like they had every right to do at that. At least we're in like yeah, you get like the feeling in the uh, lost honor of Katharina Blum. It's like, no, the cops are like doing a little bit of extra dickery here. They're going above and beyond. They're, uh, they're exploiting the loopholes cause they know that no one's looking and you have to like go through a lot of, uh, bullshit to like work through that crap. Like when her aunt comes by and starts yelling at them and accosting them for being abusive, they just start turning oh, yeah. it around on her. And she's just like flabbergasted. Like she's just like, mm-hmm. I don't even know how to respond. I don't talk this language. Cause these guys do it all day long. They know how to walk all the day, walk baby. all day. And she's just like, oh my God, like I have no chance. Like I'm so mad. Now I'm like confused because everyone's just telling me that I'm wrong. And it's like, mm-hmm. this is what the law is. And it's like, it's about keeping itself propped up. Yep. And I didn't get any of these feelings or vibes from this, this movie, which is just very nicely packaged saying, well, you're in America. You could just walk right out of here. <laughs> it's just like, yep. And <laughs> this scene after scene, like I'd like to talk to my client and it's just like here's another scene of her in a room with a bunch of people standing around it lacks oomph rj this this oh, it, this thing everything is just a little more clunky and uh poorly done in every way and in fact it's actually a great example of like people should do a compare and contrast because i think you will learn a lot about how to become a better filmmaker by doing this sort of thing oh yeah so maybe there, that's the only value is to see like failure i guess yeah, definitely. Uh, Catherine Beck sucks, man. Uh, I think you oversold my uh, interpretation of this movie. Uh, you said, should I watch Act of Passion? And I was like, well, it depends. Do you want to watch a bad movie? But then again, it is on YouTube available for you. So mm-hmm. you might as well. Uh, in my review, I was talking about how if like Catherine Bloom is this just like ice cold – like tall drink of drink of soda act of passion is like the water soda act of passion is like the the melted ice watered down version and that's what it feels like it's this is backwash it's just backwash yeah like there's so much of it that's it's so like all of the good bits are so watered down and then there's they just take out so much where again it's just like we got the guys making it were probably like, we got the broad strokes. We know what's going on here. But they lose like all of those subtle elements that actually made Katarina Bloom a good show. And then they add shit that it's just like, that's never what this 
what the story needed. Like the opening to the TV movie is showing Christ- Christopherson actually robbing a bank or something or like <laughs> like thinking about doing it. And it's like that's not what this movie needs. Like I, I think Katarina Bloom is way better – for not showing that for ambiguity. Yeah. For ambiguity, because you're kind of just like, wait a minute, if they were doing this to her, it's like, maybe that guy didn't actually do anything. Maybe everyone who's ever accused the newspapers, of things or maybe not guilty. Maybe. Or not. Maybe we shouldn't just jump to conclusions, jump to conclusions board. So yeah, it's like, it's just stuff like that. And I don't know. Everything just seems so, um, washed out. Where the whole the whole thing with the like every scene, you're kind of like, especially after you just watched Katarina Bloom, you're like, I just watched this, but better. Yeah. And this is a bad version of this. Yep. This and like this whole thing, it's like this is incels the movie, but <laughs> the bad, but the bad version. Incels. <laughs> well, the Catherine Bloom is kind of incels the movie. What? Do you know what I mean? No. Jared. What? You know what I'm talking about. I really don't. I, you've lost me now. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But at the same time, though, Kat- Katarina Bloom was a uh, surprise banger. Mm-hmm. Hey, RJ, you want to hear about people who hated Katharina Bloom? Not really, because I feel like their issues will will be bad Ooh, issues. Oh, boy. Here we go. First, okay. the, the half-star review from Oof. Momster. Okay. A flailing torture porno of the soul. Give me strength. I'm reminded of mother and the director's <laughs> shared seemingly unending desire to see the lead actress suffer because I am making a point, trademark. Fo- focus. Fucking focus. A word that is not in this film's vocabulary. Halfway in, it's still not done introducing new, horribly uninteresting characters. No one is engaging. No one is likable. And everyone's miserable. I think this is supposed to replace actual character traits. But fuck, if it doesn't fall on its face, never, ever watch this. Okay. Um... So they I think or, monster... right, right, right off the bat, they're like, I don't like mother. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. And I think they're they're equating the wrong things that they're like, well, to, they're just trying to make this woman feel bad. And it's like, that's not really what they're doing. I think Momster's got some questionable opinions, Jarrett. Momster does? Yeah questionable so Ma, uh, mother has a half a star yep. as you could have guessed uh showgirls has a half a star what women want has a half a star that's a great movie i don't give a shit what anyone says uh 500 days of summer has a half a star but i think the telling things here is when you go to five star films jared five star films shape of water avengers infinity war the 2019 remake of Pet Cemetery. Ooh. Five stars, Ooh. Jared. Oh man. Five stars. There's other things like three billboards and like kiss kiss bang bang and shit like that. And it's like, who gives a shit? But yeah, that Pet Cemetery movie? No, no. No, no. no. <laughs> that is not a five star film. That is barely a two star movie. Yeah, I think I gave it two and a half, but that's because it's on the Stephen, Tops. The Stephen King scale. Yeah, at tops. So, uh, yeah, Momster's got some opinions. Opinions. Next up, Ren of Stimpy fame. Oh, One yeah. star. This could have been a 30-minute short, and yet it was a full hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> I, I, always, I always like when people are saying that. And I know I've said that before, too, where it's like, this long movie could have been a short movie. And it's like, <laughs> okay. It's like, that short movie could have been a long movie. Like, what's the point here? Mm-hmm. And it, I, I know I've said that, too. So Tell me about I'm, Ren. Ren's got opinions. Uh, favorite movies include Baby Driver. Yep. Uh, they don't actually have a ton of movies logged. Uh, but five star films include Baby Driver, Hereditary, The Sinner with Catherine uh, Jessica Beale. I don't think that's a, a movie. I'm pretty sure that's a TV show. <laughs> Why is that on Letterboxd? Uh, but yeah, they they don't have like a lot of half star reviews or anything uh, like that or one stars. Damn. They they've only seen a couple. Oh, 
Mother, one and a half stars. So that's mm. our theme for tonight. Nice. Well, we'll see if we'll uh, get a hat trick here. Alex, two stars. Okay. While the film presented interesting ideas about Marxism and journalism, the film doesn't live up to it. I was mostly bored for a majority of this film. The story isn't very engaging, with many scenes being too long or unnecessary, and the cast outside of Catherine Blum isn't allowed any or much character development. The epilogue of the movie is just is to just solidify the point that the movie was making the whole time and added nothing to the film. The score is barely used, and when it's used, it sounds really bad. I missed my bus because of this movie as well, so fuck it for that reason as well. It's not the movie's fault that you miss your bus. That's you not fucking planning your time out. Time management skills, baby. Figure it out. Okay, I haven't found Mother on here, but uh, one thing I have found, Jared, is that all three of these people who disliked Katarina Bloom all gave Peeping Tom a bad review. Hmm. Peeping Tom, which is like kind of weird. Kind of weird, right, Jarrett? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this person's got—I mean, their five-star films include Fight Club. <laughs> so, yep. RJ, how many? Yes. This, what's unfortunate is I think a lot of people who are going mm-hmm. through this uh, creep cruise, they're going to be yeah. like, they're going to skip over this Lost Song or Katharina Bloom because they have no idea what it is, and they're just like, yeah. I've got other movies I want to see, and they won't watch this. That's too bad. And uh, I'm telling you, hey folks, it's on the Criterion Channel. It's at your fingertips. You know you're you're on it's that right channel. There. You can watch it. It's good. It's a good show, as RJ would say. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a good show for the kids. For the, for the kids, the kids will love it. For the kids, good show for the kids. No, it's like yeah. this, this reminds me of like a, you know, like a William Friedkin movie. If you like that type of thing, that type of deal. Mm-hmm. A prestige format film, Jared? Is that what you're talking about here? Yeah, dog. Yeah? Sure. It's really good. It, it's it's really good. I uh, I was surprised at how much I actually like this. It's a, a high-quality film, Jared. Came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere, like this pod. Like Jared, actually. Always coming out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Just as you're going wow. to bed. Ooh. After the break. Uh... I stuff. I uh, I'm interviewing RJ. Come on, get it out. I destroy his life, and he f- fills me up with lead. And then, and then he goes to jail. And then, well, you know, you you meet your lover and you try to like hug and feel it out, and it doesn't end great. And then uh, we're told by another podcast how podcasters need more power. Well, if podcasters understood the the subtleties of Japanese samurai fighting, then maybe they would they would be better. Well, actually, actually. Mm-hmm.